All right, we're going to be building our battery pack today, next on Now You Know. All right, so welcome back. Um, you know, last time, you know, I just spent all this time learning about volts and amps, and now you just drop on me that I need to know what watts are, which is ridiculous, because I don't know what watts are. Yeah, 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 no, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You absolutely know. If you know the volts and you know the amps, then you know the watts. But I don't know the watts. Oh, you absolutely know it. So all you got to do is take the volts times the amps equals watts. It's that simple. All right, so this is our motor. And I mean, if we take a look at the motor here, you'll see that it's 48 volts, 550 watts. Right. So what you're saying, basically, is to power this motor, we need 48 volts and 550 watts. Yeah, so what you would do is you would divide 550 divided by 48. That would give you how many amps? Okay, that's uh, 11.45. Yeah, about so, 11 and a half. So that's how many amps we need. Yeah, for constant rated at this 550 watts. Okay, so we know the volts and we know the amps now. Yep. And that tells us the watts. So the reason why you need the watts is because that's the total that's available to do work. Watts is work. And whenever you talk about power or watts, you're talking about work over time. It's not so much what's available instantly, mm -hmm. but what you could do over time. Okay. So, and then over time, that would equal what? A watt hour. Yes. Okay. Oh, wait, watts. I remember, so like a 60 watt light bulb. Exactly. Or like a, you know, 2200 watt microwave. Yes. Or in my case, a 1500 watt microwave. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why it takes longer to heat up the food, right? Because it's using less energy. Exactly. Okay. So if we go back to our water tower analogy, again, the voltage is the height or the pressure. Yeah, right? pressure so, difference. So you'd say, oh, I have a very tall water tower. Sure. And you'd be like, okay, that's great. You have a very tall water tower. That doesn't tell me how much work I can do with the water coming down out of the water tower. Exactly. Right. And then if I said, okay, um, well, my water tower, this other water tower, has uh, so many amps. That would tell me, you know, like the diameter of the pipe coming down from the water tower. So I know like how much water can flow through, but I don't know at what pressure. So that doesn't tell me anything. Or it doesn't tell you how long you could do that for. Oh, okay. So that would be a completely different thing. We've so far only been talking about the pipe diameter and the height. Yes. We haven't been talking about the size of the tank. Thank you. Okay. So All right. <laughs> what, what would... Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> so what would determine the size of the tank? So the size of the tank would be the total of the watt hours. That means how much pressure you have and how many amps you have and how long it would last over a certain amount of time. So volts times amps equals watts times time equals watt hours. So if you have a 60 watt bulb and you have a 60 watt hour battery, that means you could run that 60 watt bulb for one hour. And that's assuming that the bulb is the same voltage as the battery. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Unless, and otherwise you would not be able to power it. Right. Right. Because then you'd, then you'd have other problems, but it wouldn't yeah. necessarily be that there wasn't enough capacity in the... You could have plenty of amps, but if you don't have the pressure to push those amps, which is voltage, then you won't be able to do it. Okay. All right. So we need to make a battery pack to run this motor to put in our mower so we can replace this super janky. Yeah. We're going to get set. rid of all the efficiencies like we spoke about, because this was really just sort of to proof do, of concept. Yeah. Prove a concept. Cause right. it's very understandable in terms of battery. Yeah. You got a motor. This used to be the starter motor. Now it's the driving motor. Right. And then you have a battery to an inverter so we can run it at the correct voltage. Uh, but if we could just, get rid of all this, direct drive. So go direct from battery, directly to the motor, and the motor goes directly to the blade. In fact, it's a great analogy for what they've done with the Tesla. You know, minimal transmission, minimal losses. It's, it's about cutting your losses and going straight to it. So we know that we need 48 volts. We know that we need a certain number of watts. And like we said, we need about 11 and a half amps. Yeah, to okay. run it constant. Okay, so earlier, we said that we needed 13 batteries in series in order to get our volts. Yep. All right, so what I'm holding here is an 18650 lithium ion battery. The reason it's called 18650 is you have 18 millimeter diameter, 650 millimeter length. Right. So 
there are many other different types of lithium ion batteries with many different other types of sizes, but this is a relatively common one. It's in laptops, it's in modems, it's in uh, Teslas. The Tesla Model S has thousands of these as its battery I pack. think it's like 7,000. Yeah, it's a lot of batteries <laughs> um, to be powering a huge electric yeah. car. So that gives us a little bit of confidence in building a battery pack to run a lawnmower. If it's good enough for I Tesla, got one in my head. Good enough for you know, me. <laughs> sometimes I have to replace it. Yeah. So each of these batteries has a nominal voltage and a nominal amperage. So yeah. let's let's talk about that. Yeah, nominal means in name only. So there's obviously a, a an upper threshold and a lower threshold before you damage it. Okay, so with that that chemistry, the lithium ion chemistry, it's always going to be 3.7. And so you could see that in any either a pouch cell, cylindrical cell, there's many different form factors, but the chemistry is what gives you the voltage. So if I have a lithium ion battery, yeah. it's going to have 3.7 volts. Exactly. It doesn't matter if it looks like this, or if it looks like uh, the one that's in your phone, yeah. or the one that's in a camera. Yep. Now, what about amps? Okay, so the amps depends on uh, the manufacturer, what they did. Uh, generally, the, you know, these are around 2,500 uh, milliamp hours. And so in fact, in preparation for this, we uh, tested a lot of these and we wrote the milliamp hourage on the side. Nice. And so that is going to tell us kind of the capacity in terms of amps. It'll tell us how long it's going to last. In ter if you're pulling that at, number of amps. Right. At a, okay. certain, at a certain amount of draw, you're going to last a certain amount of time. And so it's a simple calculation between uh, your capacity and amp hours. Yep. And so, so if so, you if so Jesse going back to the to the light bulb, if you're pulling 60 watts, mm -hmm. right? And you're and and then you have a 60 watt battery, then you're going to last 1 hour. And so in this case, we're not talking about watts, which makes it a whole lot less useful. Yep. We're just talking about amps. Yes. So if I pull 1 milliamp off of this battery, which is uh, we measured it is a 2403 milliamp hour cell, right. it would last 2,403 hours. That's a long time. That's a long time. But in a milliamp, You're not going to go test that, are you? No. A I'll be back. I'm <laughs> out of here, you know. And in a milliamp is one thousandth of an amp. So if I wanted to pull one amp off of this, it would last around two and a half hours. Yeah. So that helps us with time to empty to kind of visualize and conceptualize how long I can run these batteries. So, you know, you're used to thinking about, like, let's say a car gets 20 miles to the gallon and you have one gallon, then you know you've got 20 miles, Yeah. right? Uh, so that's the time to empty. Right. So instead of miles, we got to think about time because not, you're, this is, you're not always going to be in a car with this application. Right. So you might be mowing the lawn, you're not going miles. Right. But you are using amps over time, yep. and if you know how much you need in a certain amount of, you know, at once, then you know how to size your tank. So then how does this help us know how many amps this cell can put out? Okay, so that depends on the C rating. <laughs> so, okay, we got volts, we got amps, we got yeah. watts. Now we have amp hours yep. and milliamp hours and, and watt hours wait, wait, and wait, kilowatt wait. hours. Chill. Now we have C rating. Chill. What is C rating? It's simple. It's just capacity times one. So if you're pulling, let's say, 2.5 amps or 2,403 yeah. <laughs> milliamps, okay? If you're pulling that, if, if, if that's what you're pulling over one hour, that's one C. But if you happen to spike up and the application needs more and you go to, let's say, 5,000 milliamps, that's two C. Oh. That's really easy then. Yeah. Because it's just based on the capacity of the battery. So for example, let's take out this battery and let's pretend that it has a thousand milliamp hours, which means that this would have a one amp hour capacity. That's right. And so if I was drawing one amp from it, yeah. that would be one C. Exactly. If, one I, were C. if I were drawing two one, amps from one it. One capacity. Yeah. If I were drawing two amps from it, it would be two C. Yep. Three, but, but three amps, wait, three Wait, slow C. down. Yeah, There's yeah. only so much these can do. So okay. that's why they call it a C rating. So some batteries will allow and can deliver way past their capacity, the 1C, 
and they can go up to 3C or 4C, and that's like an amazing potential. However, at some point, they cannot do that. So why don't we just have batteries that have really high C ratings? Okay, well, it's all about heat, right? So if you, if you up the C rating, you're basically pulling more, just yep. like when you're, you're, you're jogging along and you're going up a crazy hill. There's only so long until you just overheat. Okay. Right? So you don't want to draw too much of, off of the C rating. Now, some batteries are built for that, but it adds cost and it might not be necessary when you could just add capacity, uh, more amps in parallel. I see. But like, for instance, on a, on a drill, yeah. I, I need a lot of amps because we're usually running at like 12 or 18 volts. Yeah. And you don't want to have a gigantic pack on the battery, yeah. right? Like, you don't want to be plugging it like, <clears throat> oh, okay, yeah. time to drill. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you don't want to be doing that. That was good. It was like yeah. a robot. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't want to you don't want to have a giant pack. So you'd yeah. rather have enough batteries to get it up to the proper voltage, and then a high C rating, so you can pull a lot of amps out of those batteries. Exactly. Like if you could have a battery that could do 10 C. Yeah. Oh, you 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 won't. You'll need a small battery. Now, are there non-lithium ion batteries that have high Cs? Yes. All of your car batteries that start your engine. Yeah. So. What's happening now is that the capacity might be low. So for instance, you ever start your car and it just goes duh, 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 and it's a cold day and there's something wrong with the car and it runs out, it, you can't start the car. Duh, 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 duh. That's because you're pulling everything it has all at once for over a minute. And the, the C rating is crazy, it's like 50. And so the amperage must be insane. Oh yeah, this little guy will put out 300 amps. Wow. So right. if Where, we go back to our if we go back to our water rate, tank analogy, yeah. that's like having a pretty small water tank with a huge pipe. And so you oh, basically that, you open the valve and you just go splash and everything falls out of it. No kidding, that's exactly how to think about it. Okay. Right. So now instead of you uh, it's like emptying the tank faster. Yeah. Okay. That's what you're doing. A higher C rating means you could just empty the tank instantly. I see. So it delivers the power. So when it comes to lithium uh, or any battery, it depends on how you build the battery, the connections, uh, uh, the, the packaging. So you can have a higher C rating with lower capacity. So you might not need time, but you might need a quick delivery. I see. And so like for instance, this is a higher C rated cell and you'll notice it has a smaller uh, capacity. You see it, it only has 1487 milliamp hours versus your lower C rated higher capacity 2403 milliamp hour uh, cell. So that's kind of interesting. All right, so we're using these cells. What's the C rating of these guys? Oh yeah, so this one I think we, we can pull about three amps, which is about one and a half C. All right, so we need 13 cells in series in order to get the 48 volts, right? Right. Um, and then in order to get the 11 and a half amps, we need to put cells in parallel. Yeah. And so, so we need four, if these can each put out three amps, that would be 12 amps, this is 11 and a half. Yeah. That should be good. That would be within the C rating as well. Don't forget, it's gonna spike up a little bit, but nominally, that'll take care of this motor. Okay. All right, so I have 13 cells in series and four in parallel. That should give us enough volts, that should give us enough amps, and that should give us enough watts. Now you're talking, that's Woo. 13 S, four P. Oh, I've heard that before. Yeah. So that's what that means. Absolutely, when you hear someone talk about four P, that's parallel, and 13 S, that's series. Okay, cool. All right, so grab some wires and we'll hook it right up to the motor and... Um... No, 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 no. That's not how you build a pack. They're not stable, we have to assemble it. Oh, okay, great. Well, that'll be on the next episode. Okay. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see, so leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.